Lord, we look forward to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in each of us. And we thank you, Lord, that whatever we ask according to your will, we receive it. So we believe, Lord, for more power, more love, more God. Hallelujah, Lord. And we bless you and thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. you. may be seated. And I'll remind you, anybody that needs prayer or would like prayer after the service, at the end of the service, the end of the preaching part of it, you're welcome. Please come forward, Suzanne, and others will be available to pray and speak over you and be a blessing to you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we were taking communion uh, Friday night, and I just mentioned that what the Lord had spoken to me was that uh, not only are we in communion with God, or communion, or not only are we in covenant with God, but he said we are to look at each other as we are in covenant with one another. We are one body. And uh, I think maybe that's where we fail sometimes. Uh, we need to be available for one another in any situation, in any circumstance. I don't need anything, so don't, don't think I'm playing here. <laughs> I'm just saying we need to be there for each other. That's what the body of Christ is all about. And we are covenant brothers and sisters. And that means if you've got a need, I'm supposed to meet it. Amen. If there's a situation and a circumstance that I can be a blessing or I can help, then that's what I need to do. We need to be doing that for one another. It isn't just a question of uh, the ministry, quote unquote, doing this, but we all have ministry. We're all kings and priests. So, amen. We need to be praying for one another, believing for one another, declaring for one another, and uh, God will bless us as a result of it. Praise the Lord. He said, you know, if, if two of you will agree it's touching anything, he's there in the midst of it. Praise God. So thank the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Appreciate uh, everyone being here. All of you that are joining us on Facebook, uh, we're grateful to have you be a part of this service, and we pray God is blessing you uh, in your situations and your circumstances, and uh, you're seeing the power and the love of God being made manifest in your lives. Praise God. So over the last uh, few months, I've been really praying to be conscious of my oneness with God. And uh, I guess you could say to be God conscious all the time instead of just when I'm in prayer or just when I'm in a church service or just when a need arises. It's really been in my heart to, to find that oneness with God. And uh, I'm finding out that God wants that even more than I do. But you can feel it in your spirit, that hunger, that longing to be connected on a continuous basis. And uh, I'm not going to kid you that I understand it all. I just know that it isn't coming from my mental capacity. It's coming from the God that's in me wanting to connect with the God that's all around me. And uh, I think he's wanting that for all of us. It's just we all may be approaching it in different ways and because we're all individuals and we all have our own personality and, and ways of uh, approaching this. But I really know uh, it's something that I'm experiencing on a regular basis every day and every time I go to prayer, this comes up. And so um, praise the Lord. So I want to talk to you about that this morning in a way that God has... Uh, kind of showed me some things through some different studies and things that I've done. But, but I want to begin with uh, John uh, chapter 5 and verse 43 and 44. Praise the Lord. John chapter 5, 43 and 44. And I really believe that we're going to begin to see things happening that we have, uh, not necessarily about what we're praying about at that moment, but things that we have prayed about, things that we've been confessing, maybe privately and, and also corporately, but we're going to begin to see breakthroughs in people's lives unexpectedly because we can get in the habit of praying for things without really any expectation of an, income, an outcome, you know, a real positive thing. 
but God is uh, going to start breaking through in ways that, uh, that we haven't. If I'm feeling the things that I'm feeling, I know I'm not unique. He's not a respecter of persons. So I know we're all feeling this in different ways. And these breakthroughs are going to come. And they're going to come in ways that we least expect it. And maybe even to some people that we least expect it to come to. But nevertheless, it will happen. It will come to pass. God's got a purpose. And as Don was saying earlier, that purpose is going to get accomplished. It's going to be done one way or another. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm just grateful and excited about living in the time we're in. We have no concept really of the, uh, of the depth of the evil that we're facing. I'm telling you, it's a lot uglier and nastier than we have any idea about. It's a lot darker than we assume. But our God is a lot brighter, yes. a lot bigger, and a lot more powerful. Yes. And the, you couldn't ask for a better time to be born. And we are privileged children of God to have been chosen for a time right now. The time that we're living in is a powerful and exciting time to live in. It's an adventure in Jesus. Amen. I really believe that. Amen. That doesn't mean it won't be without issues, but uh, we're going to overcome them. We're going to be victorious, and that's what's exciting about it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So in John chapter 5, we're going to read verses 43 and 44. He says, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? Praise the Lord. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Praise the Lord. John 14, verse 13 and 14. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. Praise God. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. We talked about, I talked about that briefly last uh, week, I think, or maybe the week before. But hidden manna is just simply a revelation of, of the Word. It's only hidden because we haven't seen the revelation of it. The Word is always there. It's just God is revealing things to us in this last day that we hadn't necessarily seen it before. That's the hidden manna. Amen. So he that overcometh, he'll give to eat the hidden manna and will give him a white stone. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth he that receiveth it. Praise the Lord. So there's a danger uh, to have faith in faith. Because faith rests in the character of God. It's above reason. It's beyond what we can think in reasonable terms. Because faith isn't always contrary to reason. It isn't that it, it, it contradicts it. It's just way above it. In Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 29, Jesus uh, meets a blind man, and uh, he's come to Bethsaida, and they bring to him a blind man unto him, and he, the blind man asked him to touch him, to, to he, pray for him. And so he took the blind man by the hand, and he led him out of the town, and when he had spit in his eyes... Man, see, that would have freaked me out. I would, I would have not gotten healed. I would have been running for, you know, a hydrant or something. But he led him out of the town. And when he had spit in his eyes, he put his hands upon him, and he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up, and he said, I see men as trees walking. In other words, I'm seeing, but it's blurry. It's not really definable. And after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, some say Eliah, and, some, and uh, one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. So he says, Who do people say I am? Well, some think, see, they're not really hearing the question, but they're saying the prophet or this or that or the other. And then he says, But who do you say I am? 
Praise the Lord. Let me ask you a question here. What do you say when you feel happy? I am happy. What do you say when you're not happy? I am sad. What do you tell someone who asks, uh, who are you? I am your name. I am is the name of God. It's his name. I am. And it's woven into the very fabric of existence. If you ask the blind man, what's your problem? He just said, I am blind. Praise the Lord. See, when you speak of yourself, you have to say his name. Why? Because your existence comes from his existence. He is the I am of all existence. The all, you could say the I am of all I ams. Your I am only exists because of his I am. How many of you know I am is not blind? He had to be healed. Praise God. It's only from him that you can find the reason, the purpose, and the truth of who you are and what you are and your existence. And the truth was that man was not to be blind. I am not blind. Praise the Lord. So it was his I am to see. So when you say your name, you always have to speak his name. And you always have to say his name first. I am healed. I am delivered. I am victorious. I am prospered. I am an overcomer. I am victorious. I am blessed. Because his existence is first and your existence flows out of that existence. Let everything begin with him and flow from there. That's the secret of life. Not only to live for him, but to live your life from him. To live from his living. To move from his moving. To act from his actions. To become who you are from who he is. I am. Praise God. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Jesus had a revelation of this right off the bat. That's why he was always saying, I am. Amen. But what he seeth the Father do. I can't, the Son can do nothing except what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. John 9, verses 4 and 5. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Amen. Well, we are to be the light in the world. I am now the light. Amen? Don't hide your light under a bushel, right? Don't put the candle under a bushel. Let your light shine. He was the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. Praise the Lord. Exodus 3, verse 14. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent you. 
and Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are in him. We live in him. We, our movement, everything comes from him. So we need to separate the ways of the person of faith and the person of reason. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's not reasonable to think I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It's not reasonable for me to think I lay hands on somebody and cast out demons. It's not reasonable to think I can raise the dead. Amen? But faith says I can. Faith says that's what we do. So there has to be a separation between the me of reason and the I am of God. Praise the Lord. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. And I guess that's the cry of my heart is that I want the I am me, not the me me. Because I know the me me is going to reason himself right out of the picture. But the I am will talk himself right into miracles. Because God does everything by speech. He, he creates everything with his words. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Yes. Praise the Lord. See, I get it. There's, there's human reason. I can't do it. But faith simply ignores reason and rises above it. Faith goes straight to the presence of God. John 14, 13 and 14. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. What is his name? I am. Whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you will ask anything in my name, I will do it. I am going to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Yes. I am going to cast out demons. I am going to see the dead raised. Hallelujah. I am going to do what God said I can do. Yes. Praise the Lord. We reach for what we were created for. And that was God in the earth, eternal life, God life, to be manifested in us and through us here on this planet. If that were not the case, we wouldn't, first of all, be called the body of Christ. And second of all, we would have gone out of here as soon as we confessed Christ as our Savior. The moment we, by faith, believed in God. There would have been no reason to leave us here to deal with the crap that's here. Except that we can change it. See, Moses, he, he, he could have just gone on and lived great anywhere. But no, God said, you've got to go back and take me with you to do what needs to be done there because there's nobody else that can do it. I am the source of your being. And it's faith, it's faith that takes us there. Without faith. Faith, you can't be saved. You can't do anything of any spiritual value. You can't overcome. You can't be victorious. So what's faith? Truth is faith. Faith is connected to what's true. Not facts, not what we're seeing necessarily, but to truth. So actually, faith is truth. The Hebrew word emun, E-M-U-N, it means sure, it means solid, it means true. Now, if you add ah, A-H to that, it's imuna, and that's the Hebrew word for faith. So faith is a solid thing. 
It's, it's rock solid. It's, it's a rock. Amen? It's truth. Faith is actually how you join yourself or ground yourself to the truth. I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Imuna also means steadfast. It also means established, stable, and steady. So the more true faith you have, the more steadfast you become. You're no longer double-minded, moved about by every wave that comes along or every situation or circumstance that you're confronted with. You become more steady. So faith causes you to be strong. Strong in the I am and the power of his might. So there's another Hebrew word that comes from the same root word as truth and faith. And that word is amen. In Iowa, we say amen. Praise the Lord. So to say amen to God's imun, his truth, is to say it's true. I agree. Amen. So faith is to say amen. Yes, God. Amen to his reality, not just with our mouth, but with our whole self. Your I am. With your I am. Say amen with your entire being, with who you really are. Look at Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord... So walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I am. So, right? So, so, God has a name, and it's a name that has to do with you. It's a name that has to do with only you. A secret name. Revelation 2, he said, I'll give you a name. If you overcome, I'm going to give you hidden manna. I'm going to give you some stuff you didn't know, and I'm going to give you a different name. And only you are going to know the meaning of it. Only you and he will understand what that name means. You'll be the only ones that know this, that secret name or the meaning of it. So let's look at Genesis 32, 24 through 28. And we know the story of Jacob. He's been a rat and a fink and a liar and a sneak and a cheat all of his life, but God blessed him. And now he's got to confront his brother, who he cheated out of the uh, inheritance, out of the uh, firstborn status, and he goes off by himself, and he's looking for the Lord. He's looking for an encounter with God. He needs to have some in encouragement. He needs to have some confidence that he's not going to die tomorrow when his brother shows up that he's going to be able to do what he feels he's supposed to be doing for the Lord. And so Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. Now, that wasn't an angel, or it wouldn't have called him a man. It was some manifestation of God. So he wrestles with him, and he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go. For the day breaketh, and he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men hast prevailed. Power with God and prevailed. The interesting thing is that Jacob also asked God for his name. 
Verse 29. And Jacob asked him, and he said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou ask after my name? And he blessed him in that place. Now, it doesn't actually say what the name was. But we know that soon after that encounter, Jacob reveals it. Because whenever they would build an altar and sacrifice, they would sacrifice to the name of the Lord, before the name of the Lord. So look in uh, Genesis 33, verse 20, which is the very next time. He's establishing his home now. They're putting their tents in. He's got his flocks together. The family's all there. And he's establishing this as his, as his dwelling place, right? So he erects an altar there, and he calls it El Elohe Israel. El Elohe Israel, which means God, the God of Israel. So what's he saying? Israel was Jacob's new name, his own name, right? So for Jacob to call God the God of Israel is the same as naming him the God of me. God, the God of me. And God refers to himself as the God of Israel. So can you see it? It's God's will to join his name to you. And the scripture says, if you're born again, you are also joined to him. I and my father are one, Jesus said. So is it with us. So you have to join your name to the name of God. It means not to call him God, but you have to give him a new name. For real faith, there has to be a new name. To operate in you with this real faith, God has to become the God of you. Not just God, not just God of the Bible, not just God of the church, not just God of the bride, but the God of Don, the God of Sally, the God of Nathan. I have to know him as the God of Nathan. I am Nathan. Am I making any sense? Sally must know him as the God of Sally. Sally, right? It's his will that your name be in his name. What are we going to have? We're going to have a big wedding feast. We're already a spouse. We already have. We're mar- what do you happens when you get married? You get a name. And that's his name. His name is to be joined to our name. Listen to me. His secret name is as sacred as any other name of God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Sidkenu. Go on and on and on. Those are sacred names of God. But this secret name is just as sacred to God as any other name that he's spoken. It means he's the God of your existence. The God of your life. The God of your past. The God of your needs. The God of your personality. The God of your hurts. The God of your wounds. The God of your heart. It means he's the God of you and all that you are. So it's the name that only you and him fully understand. Because nobody knows everything about you but you and him. We've all got pains and hurts and failures and weaknesses and things that have happened to us in the past that we carry with us even to this day. Even though we've been delivered, it's still there. It's still a part of us. And only me and God know everything that's ever happened with me. Only God and I know Nathan. Others know me well, but only God knows me. And it's the same way with every one of us. That's why it's a secret name. It's a name that only God and I really understand. And it's the same for each one of us. For anybody who really knows him, it's the name that they're going to come to discover. The sacred name of God. The God of you. The God of me. The I am Nathan. Psalms 18 verse 2.
The Lord is my rock. Look at this. See, David, this is the thing David had a revelation of, I believe. The Lord is my rock. Not our rock, not the world's rock, not Israel's rock, my rock. And my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. It's personal. It's th they're one. We're, they're operating as one. So look at John now, chapter 20, verse 27 and 28. And Jesus reveals this after his resurrection because Thomas is not operating in faith. He's, he's doubting everything. That's obviously why they called him Doubting Thomas. But look what Jesus does to him. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And what's Thomas say? The first thing he says, My Lord and my God. Not ours, all of a sudden it's become me and him. It's personal. My Lord and my God. Can you imagine if we really lived from this truth, what, what we would do? We would really believe that my God is going to heal the sick. My God is going to work through me. Amen. My God, I am Nathan, is going to lay hands on the sick and see him recover. I'm not trying to elevate myself. I'm just saying this is what God has answered my prayer of I want to know you and I want to be one with you. I want to be conscious of you. I want to know about this relationship that we have that is more than just something religious, just something that I confess is something that I want, but something that you desire, something that you, you want to have more than I do. And I, have, I find that hard to believe because it's something I really want. I really hunger for. Faith is birthed in the revelation of His name and mine. His name and yours becoming one. You're one. You and He are inseparable. And it's throughout the Bible. Let me, let me show you another. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. Isaiah is prophesying about the coming of the Lord, coming of Jesus, the birth of Jesus. And he said, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, and he has also become my salvation. Well, then look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus literally means he will save. It's, it's the Yeshua. It's Joshua. But in Hebrew, it would be Yeshua, which is Jehovah saved, past tense. Or another looser translation is God is salvation. So his name is Yeshua because of us. Because of our need for salvation. Every time his name is spoken, just like Abraham, father of many nations, gave him a name so that every time that name was spoken, it would reaffirm what he was, who he was, and what he was to do. So every time that name is named, or every time it's spoken, it's a reminder that he has become one with us. Yes. Yes. That means we are actually in His name. Yes, Lord. Praise God. It's our salvation that His name is declaring. Yes. His name declares our salvation. You're in His name. You, when you receive His name, Yeshua, you receive that when you became well, let me say it this way. When you receive his name, Yeshua, when he becomes your salvation. Right? You received his name. When you receive salvation, it becomes finished. It becomes your name. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's like his name is a prophecy. A prophecy that becomes true when you receive it. His name is a mystery, and we're part of that mystery. When you receive it, the name is fulfilled. God becomes your salvation. 
So everyone who receives the name is already in the name. Think about it. It explains why he would say, you were in him before the foundation of the world. How? You were in that name. You were in the prophetic name. It was just a question of it being spoken. The moment you were saved, it became your name. You became a part of that name. Although in the mind of God, it was already you. You were already in it before the foundation of the world. We are in his name. Now, it's interesting to me that I got his name. I am Nathan. But he was named for us. Praise the Lord. I'm named for him. He was named for me. We are one. There's no getting around it. I can overthink almost anything. I say I'm really disciplined. Sally says I'm obsessive. But everything, you see, isn't it interesting? Everything we're crying out for and asking for, God is saying, Nathan, you've already got it. We're asking for healing. He's saying, guys, you're already healed. I, I'm asking for this oneness, this, this intimacy, this consciousness of the oneness with him. And he's saying, you got it. And I'm saying, Lord, how are we going to take care of this bill? He says, you've got it. I've, I became poor I, so that you could be rich. Covenant. Covenant. Praise the Lord. We are one, church. I'm telling you. There's no separation between us and the Lord except our own minds that get in the way of the reality of who we are, what we are, and what we have available to us through that relationship. And I thought, I mean, every time I would pray this, and I'm just confessing here, and it's almost every morning when I pray, it will come up. And that's the time when I feel the deepest spiritual outpouring, if you can call it that, of any time in the prayer. I weep every single time. And God knows, I, and Sally will tell you too, I don't, I'm not a crier. I don't cry at funerals, not even people that are close to me. It just isn't something I do. But when God moves on me, I cry like a 12-year-old girl. It happens all the time. It happens up here. I'll just be talking, and, and all of a sudden, I'm thinking, what the heck is wrong with you? You having some kind of emotional breakdown here or what? But it's just God's way of saying, here I am, Nate. And that's what he's saying to all of us. I am Nathan. Yeshua, the God of my salvation. He's in me. I'm in him. We are one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nothing will be impossible to them that believe. That's the key that Jesus had. He got a revelation of who he was. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me for a purpose. He got a revelation of who he was. And from that point on, there was no stopping him. The gates of hell cannot prevail against a people who know they are God's and God is theirs. Give him a hand this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, a lot of bad crap in the world, but the devil is scared crapless of us when we get a revelation Amen. of who we are and begin to speak from that yeah. position, from that identity. He trembles like the coward that he is. Yeah. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Go on the power of that name. Share it. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed. And anybody that wants prayer, uh, you can come on up. And Suzanne, I, anybody else that wants to pray can be praying with you. In Jesus' name.